What do you think of when you hear the word paleontology? Let's be honest. You may think of dinosaurs or Jurassic Park. Well, paleontology is more than just digging up dinosaurs out west. It is the understanding of Earth's history through the fossil record and those organisms that existed in those types of environments millions and sometimes billions of years ago. To understand paleontology, we have to look at fossils. And fossils are the remains of plants and animals or the traces or the behavior of those animals that lived hundreds of millions if not billions of years ago. And we have to really look at fossils to understand how these organisms and how those environments change through time. And when we look at fossils, we really have to understand these types of things because the earth has shifted and has changed over billions of years. And so when we look at fossils, we have two different types of fossils. We have two different groups of fossils. We have body fossils and we have trace fossils. Body fossils are actually the remains, the hard parts of an organism. Bones, teeth, uh, eggshells, things of that nature that actually solidify and actually harden. So things like, say, shells, like these brachiopods here, is an example of body fossils. So these shells are made up of hard parts. They're made of a mineral called calcite. And these are actually made up of a hard mineral. Sometimes you'll also find things like bones, like this piece of dinosaur bone here from the late Jurassic rocks of Wyoming. This is a hardened part of an animal that existed 150 million years ago. Or it also might be that of a plant, like this plant fossil from the Carboniferous period that's over 300 million years old. It can also be possibly fossil wood. Um, fossil wood like this, that's about 230 million years old. And it, look, it probably doesn't, it has the physical shape of a wood. When I hit it with a rock hammer, it's completely solid. That means it's been fossilized. The second group is known as trace fossils. And trace fossils are the remains of the activity of an organism fossilized. And so that could be something like from a footprint, that can also be a burrow, and it can also be something like copper light, which is fossilized dung. So I have a couple of examples here that show trace fossils. So this is an example of a trace fossil. So in here, you can actually see these squiggly lines. These are actually burrows of invertebrates, of animals that are lacking a backbone, that were actually uh, swimming in the water and actually forming these types of burrows and traces over 500 million years ago. So this rock dates back to the Cambrian period, and you had organisms, maybe like worms or other, uh, other, or other animals that were lacking a backbone, invertebrates, that were making these traces in this rock slab here. And this rock slab was once mud at the bottom of an ocean, and as this mud actually became a rock, actually became um, a rock and hardened, um, it left those different traces. So the organisms that were burying inside of the sediment left those marks inside of the rock and it, as it hardened and became fossils. So you'll have something like that being found in trace fossils. You'll also have things like this. This is a coprolite. This is fossil dung. Um, this is the, the ex excrement of a, a, possibly a mammal um, that probably lived about 35 million years ago in what was known in what is now South Dakota. And this is actually the fecal matter of a organism of possibly a carnivorous mammal that existed about 35 million years ago. And so this is the, the fossilized remains of poop and is actually uh, known as a trace fossil. It's actually a very common trace fossil. You'll also find things like footprints, maybe a dinosaur footprint that, um, that left its uh, mark in the mud. Um, 150 million years ago or, or during that time when dinosaurs existed. And sometimes you'll also find things like, um, you'll find uh, bite marks or bite traces and things like that are actually representative of trace fossils as well. So you have two different types of uh, groups of fossils that are known, body fossils and trace fossils. Um, body fossils seem to be the most common fossils. Um, they're actually very well preserved. So as said, like with bones or fossil wood, you'll also find things like teeth. This is a shark's tooth, uh, a Carcaricles megalodon tooth from South Carolina. And uh, sometimes you'll find teeth like these. And teeth, bones, and shells are actually the remains of the hard part. So these are some of the most common fossils that you'll typically find. And they are the fossils that preserve the best. So teeth are very common. Bones are also very common in the shells. Um, and sometimes plants are also very common as body fossils, and they're more, they're more common that way. So how do fossils actually form? How do you get a fossil um, in the first place? 
Well, there are different ways that you can actually find and, and different ways fossils can be preserved. Um, the more common way is known as pre-mineralization, and that just simply means minerals are replacing the, um, the soft body parts or the soft remains of that bone or shell, uh, things of that nature. So you're actually not getting the actual bone or the actual soft parts of the animal. What you're actually looking at are, is the replacement of minerals in, that are inside of the bone. So as I showed you here, um, this is a piece of a dinosaur bone from the Jurassic period. And what you're looking at here is the replacement of minerals um, that occurred as this bone was being preserved. So what you're looking at here is the, uh, possibly not the actual bone itself, but what you're looking at here is the replacement of minerals that are filling in, that have filled into the uh, spaces of that bone. So what you're looking at here is not the physical bone, but the minerals that replaced it. And the shape of the bone is still there. Um, but the actual tissue, the actual organic matter is not there anymore. So what you have is a mineral replacement. Um, it's also known uh, in plant fossils that you'll typically find carbon films uh, is an also good preservation in regards to plant fossils and other types of fossils. So you're not looking at the actual plant itself, but what you're looking at here is the organic, um, what, or what used to be the, the carbon that was left inside of the fossil plant here. So you're not actually looking at the actual plant, you're looking at a carbon film of that plant that existed uh, 300 million years ago. In some cases, you'll also find fossils, or very rare cases, I should say, you'll find fossils that actually do have soft preservation. And this is very rare. Things like uh, hair, soft tissue, uh, gut remains are very, very rare as fossils. But sometimes in places, um, for example, we have the Burgess Shale, for example, in Canada, that preserves soft body remains of fossils. Sometimes you'll find the soft tissues of fossils. And this only happens in very rare circumstances where you have maybe a, a, a fast uh, event, um, possibly maybe a sand dune collapse, or possibly maybe a mud flow that um, actually preserved the animal or preserved the organisms that were in an environment that was um, low in oxygen. And you'll actually have hair, you'll have um, the soft body parts, sometimes you'll find things like that. There's also instances of color being found in fossils. So sometimes you'll find some color pigments that are found in more recently dinosaur fossils. So sometimes things like that can be preserved, but they're very, very rare. And they only occur in certain places and in certain environments. So you can find fossils like these. Um, but the more common fossils that you'll typically find, or the more uh, common preservation you'll find, is the, the the hard parts or you know the the act the fossils themselves and this is a fossil trilobite um, preserved in shale. Now, uh, what types of fossil like what types of rocks can you find fossils in? Um, there are many different types of rocks um, that you can actually find fossils in. The more common rock that you'll find fossils in is uh, um, sedimentary rocks, and these are rocks that were breaking down of sediment that formed in the bottom of an ocean or maybe a stagnant lake, and it actually preserves fossils. Um, so you'll find fossils um, where sedimentary rocks are. So things like limestones, um, for example, like this limestone here, and you can see it has uh, fossil shells, brachiopods. You'll also find things, fossils, uh, for example, like in uh, shale, like this. You'll find fossils also in coal that are actually the remains or the, the baked remains of plants. So you can find fossils in sedimentary rocks. Um, they're more rare in metamorphic rocks, like maybe you'll find maybe a deformed fossil and maybe sometimes like slate, but it's very rare in that case to find fossils in things like marble and things that uh, were baked underneath their surface. And it's also extremely rare to find, to find fossils in igneous rocks. Um, there are some cases where you might find um, things like fossils and maybe basalt um, there have been ice age mammals that have been found in basalt, um, basalt rocks before, but that is extremely rare. And you're more common to find fossils in sedimentary rocks like shells, sandstones, um, more common of that nature. Fossils can tell us a lot about the environment as well. They can tell us a lot about climate change. And this is something that's been really, really important. They can tell us a lot about the environment and how it has changed through time. And so we can actually learn about the climatic history. We can actually learn about the uh, examples. Um, we, we have examples of how the earth has changed over time by the using of uh, rocks and fossils uh, today. And so we have organisms like these. Um, this may look like a potato chip, but this is actually a fossil 
of a single-celled organism called a forum. Forums are very important for us to understand what the environment was like hundreds of millions, if not recently. So we can actually use these fossils of doing that. Fossils are really, really important for us to tell the ancient environment. Same thing for plant fossils. We can actually use plant fossils for us to understand what the environment was like hundreds of millions of years ago. So climatic history and understanding how climate has changed through time helped paleontologists um, for us to understand how climate and how uh, the earth has changed. And we're going through a massive um, extinction event right now. So we have other extinction events that have occurred in Earth's history and in the Earth's past, but we are going actually through a extinction event right now where a lot of organisms and the, the environment of the Earth has changed through time. I mean, it's changing right now. And we can use fossils and we can understand what the past environments were like to better understand how we move forward in our future and how we can stop using um, or cut down the use of natural resources like coal and oil and things like that. We call these um, things not, uh, we call these uh, um, products uh, fossil fuels for an, for a for a good reason because they are formed from the uh, ancient plants and ancient organisms from fossils. And so, the better we can stop using coal and oil and natural gases, the better we can try to shift our environment into where it is habitable, not for just for us, but as other organisms. So, Earth's history has changed through time. We use fossils in order to understand that history and how it's changed through time. We also understand how the rocks form. We understand the chemical. We can um, put down the, um, we can extract different types of uh, chemicals and, 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 and um, I, um, um, isotopes and uh, different atoms for us to understand how that environment has changed through time. So the better that we can understand how, the better we can understand the past and its environment and its, and its time, the better we can understand where we are going to be headed in the next couple of hundreds, millions of years, if not thousands of years, to better understand where we sit as a species and all the other organisms that are around us today.